After the ODU is fully assembled, mounted, and plumbed, alignment is easy. First run the cables up the feed arm. Connect the cables to the LMB output ports. When attaching the jumpers to the 99, 101, and 103 LMB, attach top to top and bottom to bottom. Next, attach the 110 and 119 LMB bracket to the arm. Once you have lined the antenna, never disconnect these LMBs. Doing so will require an entire realignment. First, you need to connect the LMB output to a signal level meter. Then roughly point the dish to the azimuth you retrieve from the setup menu. Here's where the KA KU antenna is different. It needs to be installed with greater precision and accuracy over previous KU only systems. This graph illustrates the difference in the beam width of the KA signal and the KU signal. The KA beam is about one third less the size of the KU beam. This means you're going to have more width across the peak of the KU beam, so tuning is not as critical with the KU. However, the narrow peak of the KA beam must be finely tuned to prevent rain fade or other distortions. Set the inline signal level meter for 101 degrees right hand circular polarity, 13 volts with no 22 kilohertz tone. Slowly rotate the antenna around the mast in the azimuth direction until a peak is obtained. Then lock down the mast clamp bolts. Using a half inch nut driver, adjust the fine elevation screw for maximum signal level. Write down the course alignment signal level for comparison during a later step. Next, fine tune the tilt. Set the inline meter for 119 degrees right hand circular polarity reception. Make note that this ODU rotates on an axis at the 101 degree satellite, unlike the multisat that rotated on an axis on the 110 satellite, where rotating the tilt would cause the 101 to go off peak. Slowly rotate the ODU around the tilt axis and peak the signal from 119. Then carefully tighten down the tilt lockdown nuts. Now fine tune the elevation. Set the inline meter back to 101 right hand circular polarity. Then set the plastic readout dial to zero. Using a half inch nut driver, rotate the elevation fine tune screw exactly two turns counterclockwise. And record the level from the signal level meter. This signal level will be lower than the level obtained during the course elevation reading. Next, rotate the fine elevation screw clockwise through the peak and until you reach the identical signal level we wrote down after turning the screw counterclockwise. Make sure you count the number of turns as well as the fractions of turns. Write down the exact number of turns. Remember, the numbers will be incrementing in reverse order. Thus the number displayed on the dial will not directly correspond with the total number of turns. For example, if you stop on 6, you actually moved 4 increments clockwise past 0, not 6. Divide the number of turns by 2, then rotate the elevation fine-tuned screw counterclockwise this amount. Then carefully tighten the elevation lockdown nut. Now let's fine tune the azimuth. The azimuth fine tuning procedure uses identical readings either side of the peak in order to arrive at the precise alignment. First, verify that the azimuth lockdown bolts are slightly loose to allow free movement of the dither mechanism. Set the signal level meter to 101 right hand circular polarity and unscrew the dither lock pin. Verify the ODU will move slightly from side to side without binding. Next, move the ODU against the left side of the dither stop and read the signal level. Then, move the ODU against the right side of the dither stop and compare the signal level to the previous reading. 
Turn the azimuth fine adjustment screw to increase the lower of the two signals. Repeat the dither process until identical signal levels are achieved on left and right stops. When the levels are exactly the same at the left and right dither stops, move the ODU to the center of the dither range and carefully tighten the dither lock pin. The current signal should be equal or higher than what was recorded for the course alignment. A lower level would indicate a possible alignment problem and will require repeating the fine tuning process. It is extremely important that you follow this dither alignment procedure as shown. Do not rely solely on a peak meter reading from the 101 satellite. Now while your meter may show peak signal strength, the KA satellites could be way off. After all signals are verified, lock down the dish and make sure all adjustments are tightened. You should confirm the signal strength of all satellites on all IRDs after you route the cable from the ODU. But before you can do that, you'll need to ground the system to meet NEC or local standards. Since this antenna falls in the same category as the standard direct TV antenna, the grounding requirements are the same. Make sure you follow the code. Next, you'll need to route the RG6 cable to the receivers. Let's take a look at some of the things you'll need to consider when routing cables.